Hello poetry lovers and poetry curious. So I am back to read another poem by Helen Adams from No More Masks, an anthology of poems by women that was published back in the 1970s. So this is The House of the Mirror. And I actually started this video once and I ran smack into <laughs> some dialect. Right. So, she wrote this in 1964, so she, or it was published in 1964. The, the assumption is that she wrote it in her 40s, later in her life, when she was, she was raised in Scotland and had a strong Scottish connection, and that's, that happened in this poem. She let that bleed through into this poem. But I can't pronounce these words that way. And so I stopped the previous video and I went through and I gave um, what I think are very appropriate replacements in contemporary American English. With one exception, there is a phrase, loop the bray. And I'm assuming that loop the bray is go around either the house or go around a field or something, I don't know, but finding a way in. You'll see when it shows up. But I tried to make it more understandable, but and more readable and understandable to me, and understandable to you, so I hope this will, will work. Because I still think it's a fascinating poem, and it's another creepy kind of a poem. So here we go, The House of the Mirror. Upon the hill my lover stands, a burning branch is in his hands. He stamps impatient on the stone and calls and claims me for his own. I bolt my door, I hood my light, I run to slam the shutters tight. I tug my curtains close and thick, I stop my clock lest it should tick. My house is dark, my house is still. He shines and thunders on the hill. I pace the rooms, and as I pass, I even glint sidelong towards the glass. The tarnished mirror ten feet tall, there floats my image safe from all. Though soon my love will loop the bray and wreck my house ere break of day. At his approach, I'm like to D. There's another one. I think it's die, but I'm like to D. So hard my heart belabors me. My house of stone of stone, my house of stone shows frail as straw, for at a clap its walls down fall. But woe my heart for well I can, he seeks a love never found by men. Through body's store he seeks the lass. Ah, where, what? <laughs> Through body's store, my glasses don't help either. <laughs> Through body's store he seeks the lass, what haunts the darkness of the glass. The ghost that in the mirror gleams floating aloof like what, like one what dreams. For her he rages mad and blind and plunders all my flesh to find. He dives within my body's deeps to fathom where the phantom sleeps. He shrieks because he cannot clutch what lies beyond the grief of touch. I, though we struggle breast to breast and kissed and kiss so hard we cry for rest, and dare all pleasures till they cloy, we find no peace and little joy. For still between us moves the shade that never will lie beneath his plaid. All but my ghost to him I give, my ghost no man may touch and live. O mirror like the midnight sky, so high and dark, so dark and high, there bides my, yes, there bides my wraith remote from men, in world 
things no earthly lovers can. My flesh is starved morn and night for all love's horror and delight. My ghost apart from passion stands, it is my ghost that love demands. While, while blood drums loud against my ear, and bones grow weak with blissful fear, upon the hill my lover moans for what was neither blood nor bones. So another very interesting, creepy poem from a woman's perspective. Alrighty, and that's it for Helen Adams. We will, in the next video, explore another poet in this book. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.